Hello everyone, today I'm going to be making a lot of automated farms. Uh, due to the nature of this video, there will be a ton of timestamps for each farm in the description. Do you wish to look at something in particular? I want to do most of this a little out of the way, so I'm thinking of doing it just right over here. This is where our base is, so it's still pretty close, but far enough away so I don't have to deal with most of it. I dug out a little space here, and I want to get started on a wood farm. This is actually rather easy. We place the roots along here. Two sprinklers is all that is necessary. Then just place a couple drills down, like so. Before they start growing, I want to make sure that we box this in completely. Alright, this should be good enough. Of course, the drills also need to work, so we're going to need a way of powering it. I think I forgot some cables. I'll be right back. Okay, I just place the cables underneath the sprinklers, and there we go. All the drills are working. Now we're going to need a pickup system. So we're going to need to just place a couple of these conveyors down. So now when the wood grows, well, at least if it grows this way, it will be hit by the drills, and the drills will spit it out onto the conveyor. The conveyor will push it towards the arm, and the arm will push it into this chest. Of course, if it has power. I'm not going to waste the whole generator on this thing, so just put down some wire right behind there. Oh, there you go, you can see it in action. So the drill picked up the wood, and the wood goes onto the conveyor, and will be put in this chest. Right, of course, if the wood spreads towards the tile that is underneath the sprinklers, it will not uh, hit. We could fix this by putting the sprinklers on the other side, actually. Actually, why didn't I do that? Am I stupid? Guys, I think I must be stupid. These don't need power, so I don't know why I put them on that side to begin with. This should work out tons better, though. There we go. Now that will actually mine every single block. Well, except for the ones that grow to the other side. But once they've grown there, they can't anymore, so they will have to grow to this side. And there we go, that's a completed wood farm. It is pretty easy, though. And I actually think, if we just knock out this wall, we can double back it with the next farm. This next farm is going to be pretty simple. And honestly, it's literally going to be the same. But for coral wood. So let's say I got some coral wood seeds here. Do they only grow on s they only grow on sand? And of course they would. I'm gonna grab some sand. I keep forgetting that certain plants grow on certain uh, other materials. It is kind of annoying every once in a while because they have so many different land tiles. But we should have a ton of it anyway. So just replace them with sand flooring. I'm gonna activate the drills already as well. That should be easy enough. Put down a wire on this side too, and it will. That one generator in the corner there will boost all of them. There we go. Put down the sprinklers. Now we quickly gotta box this in. If you do not box this in, the wood will go rampant. And there we go. That is the fully automated wood farm. To show in perspective, in the time that it took me to build the other side, this one was giving me 24 already. They grow pretty fast, which is why I wanted to use this big chest. Now for the next farm, I'm actually gonna reuse this one, believe it or not. So if we were to just mine a this away, we get where the drills at. I think I used all the drills actually. And I'm gonna have to make more. We're gonna have the same drill set up. This will go to another arm. However, this one will not pull it directly into a chest. This one first puts it in one of these, a sawmill, and then pulls it out and puts it in a chest. A chest I forgot to bring as well. But that is alright. So let's see, all I need to do now is connect this up, which, uh, to be fair, I probably made a lot more difficult just because the way I build it. I'm just gonna go this way. Why is it not working? I mean, there's a limit on this, I didn't know that. There we go, that should fix that. There we go, everything is powered up. I would also like the power to have its own little room. This is more aesthetic. So what's gonna happen now is the wood that will grow this way will be picked up by these drills, will be put in the conveyor, that will be grabbed by the hands. The hands will put it in the wood cutting machine to automatically give us coral planks. And then, well, we also need to have a place for that, of course. That's just gonna go into a chest right here. There we go. Nice little generator room. Which actually is powering all of this, just one generator. It's pretty crazy. Uh, I made a mistake here, I guess. Yes, I think I know how to fix this. All we would have to do is turn this this way, 
And now we also need to do the same thing, but on the other side there. Because of course you guessed it, I also want to have this wood. Let's see, first things first, rip out the wall again. Alright, that's all good. So now we just convey our everything this way. Turn the last one around. Block this in real quick. And this one is going to work slightly different as well. Just because of the way where I want to put it. The core mechanics are still going to work the same as the other plank one. Place down the hand. Place down the saw machine. Then place down another hand. And this hand will lay down the planks on the conveyor. And then there's at the end another hand. And this hand will put it into this chest. There we go. Now you can kind of see what's going on. The arm still needs to be powered though. That should be as easy as running a wire through this wall here. Alright, there we go. Now we can fully automate coral and wood. But we also fully automate the plying. So you can see the one up there working right now. Alright, so now that we're done with all of that. I'm actually going to have to repair this pickaxe. And I'm going to go fetch the iron as well as the scarlet. Because scarlet we are running really low on. And I would like to use a bit more because we're running low on drills as well. Alright, for this next project, we're going to actually need uh, a rather large area. What we're going to be doing is we're going to create a seed farm. At this point in the game, I don't really need a seed farm. Especially now on the scale I'm going to be building it at. So I might just trim it down quite a bit. My gardening is high enough level that I basically get enough seeds back. Like the same amount that I plant. Alright, for this next one, I actually want to try something out. So originally I was going to use these Galaxite traps... Uh, these are way too overpowered for what I'm doing. You could just may as well make the regular traps. But I want to see if the turrets are actually better for this farm. So from the other items in my inventory, you may have already guessed what I'm going to be building here. So all we need is we just need a small patch of the ground slime. Slimes will spawn on this patch. And then we just grab some conveyors. We have them go uh, this way. I'm going to put some light on here. Light should not affect these guys, so it should be alright. And this is the point where I'm wondering, right? So I was going to originally put down a trap here. They should work without electricity. And the point was basically the slimes will hop on this and then they die. But I am wondering now. If I put down a turret instead, I don't fully know how these work just yet. And then of course it needs some power. But that should be fine. I want to make a little generator room for this one as well. Just like I did with the other farms. So now the turret should be active. So the question is if I just put this right here, right? Place on the arm. And then the arm should just put the stuff in the chest that I, again, don't have. Make sure you actually power the arm. And it's going to be rather difficult to test this out. Just due to the nature of spawning, I guess. Oh, there was a slime. Look at that. So all we needed to do is we needed to walk over to the conveyor belt. Oh, he actually did it. He is going over there. We can actually see how the turret's going to work. Don't fight it, slime. Your death is inevitable anyway. I will come in there and kill you if you don't hop onto it. <laughs> the turret isn't doing anything. Is it just due to the orientation? There we go, now it did something. Oh, alright, so I think the trap will honestly be better here. Alright, now that all that nonsense is out of the way, I'm going to be working on the next one. Which will be... Basically the similar thing, but I'm going to use it for cavelings. Cavelings dropped something, and that's what I'm going to keep it as, because I don't remember what, but I know I wanted it. going to have a spawning on this side. Probably going to have two conveyors on this one. Right, I remember why I wanted these again. Cavelings can drop uh, the mechanical parts, and those are kind of a pain to be getting otherwise. Like, you can buy them, but they're rather expensive. So they all converge to this spot, and uh, that's where they will die. Yeah, the less neat thing about this one, actually, having it on both sides, is they can just kind of run to the other side and escape the conveyor belt, but... Oh, there we go, there we go. He's gonna die soon. He isn't actually dying as fast as I thought, and they can run out. Hmm. If this works the way I want it to, then that's gonna be crazy. So now the question is, will they spawn on this? So this part, I'm gonna have to completely redo. Just due to the amount of things I just learned. Gotta, uh, gotta admit, that looks pretty menacing. Oh? There's a crystal skull shard in here, which means this farm works. You can put conveyor belts over 
the spawning platforms and they work that is so neat so the idea i have for this next one is going to be a combat experience farm most of the time when i'm out in the world especially in the harder zones i tend to just use ranged weapons now that's good and all but as you can see that means my melee combat stat is like very far behind and this basically means that i'll never ever use it especially in the harder zones, which is kind of a shame because, well, the moment I run out of, like, bow juice, I most of the time have a problem because this axe is pretty tough, but I don't feel like it's dealing enough damage to keep me safe. So my plan is to make a spawn room with just this tile here. And I feel like we're going to have way less than I was kind of hoping for. Well, even so, this should still work. You just walk in here every once in a while. This one also spawns the cocoons, and the cocoons spawn a bunch of tiny larvae. Larvae are not really the best for XP, I will admit. However, they are pretty easy and they'll be good for especially early on. And you'll probably not die from them. Alright, we got one left, so I'm just gonna keep that. Let's start boxing this in real quick. Of course not on these tiles. And then I want to have... Where did my traps go? Put the traps around here. The traps will be on this side just so I can have a light source for coming in and out of the room. So these larva guys, they do come towards light, which is why I put all the traps down there. And at least the entrance is safe as well. Alright, so it looks like the light, the big guys, will actually just go straight through and catch the light anyway. So either we need to have more traps or something. But hey, this should work out pretty well, right? And this could be made pretty early on, too, for some good combat experience. Seems like our slime killing machine actually got another kill, because we didn't have bomb pepper seeds in here before. Now I'm going to change this out to a big chest. Although I'm not sure how many things slimes can drop. But we'll have to check that out. And eventually, when we have other types of mobs that I want to farm... Actually, you know what? I'm going to look at the drop tables for the different kind of... Uh, monsters we can farm and then see which ones I want to farm as well. All right I just checked the wiki and I think the only other one I want to be creating be a lush moss one. This will basically just be a better seed farm. So call it the advanced seed farm if you will. Also something I noticed is I lost all the tombstones except for this one that I have in the bank now which is also the main reason how I uh, know I lost them. Because I was looking for the spot where it was supposed to be, but I couldn't find it. Alright, how about we just make it on the edge of this one? All I need to do is kind of figure out how many of these we can place down here. Oh man, they already start spawning? <laughs> Why did these guys start spawning? Alright, well, it works. Now all we have to do is get some conveyors over. Trap will be over here. This wall will be replaced by turrets, of course. We don't have many of these, not as many as I would have liked. But you know, it seems like uh, this will probably just do the trick. I'm going to borrow some of this power from this side as well. Just so I can uh, use the arm over here to put the stuff into the chest. I forgot to bring a door. Of course I would. But that should work now. This should be a advanced seed farm. This slime farm is also doubling up as a seed farm for like the lower tier seeds. But also... We are able to get a idol for the king slime here, so it would be handy to keep it around. Unless you don't want to fight the king slime. In that case, don't keep it around. With all this electricity here going through walls, I might actually eventually place on the electrical lights instead of these ones. Oh, there we go. We can see them in action, actually. Yeah, they can't really do much. It doesn't work in as efficient as the one up here, I think. No, it should work like similar efficiency. To be honest, I think the only thing I would change, if I had to, like, know how beforehand, is probably you want to have turrets all along here. Alright, I will admit, this is something you probably want to put down in your world rather early, a lot of these farms. The neat thing about them, though, is now that we have them, whenever I AFK for a long period of time, I will get a bunch of resources from them. A lot of these resources can be put into either new portals, or something along those lines. They don't work that fast. I think if they were... 
bigger, of course I would be working a lot faster. But hey, this should be good enough, right? I AFK quite a bit on this world, so I think this should be fine. So I think during the next episodes, prettifying this area, or maybe actually on the house, who knows? That'll be up for future me to decide. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye everyone.